following is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Houston. Last night, the Astros got huge contributions from the new guys. Steve Pierce had three RBIs. Tyler Green belted a huge home run. But Scott Moore saved the best for last with a walk-off hit in the 10th inning. Now today, Jordan Lyles gets the nod, hoping to build on his quality start last time out. So root, root, root. The Astros go for the sweep, and it's next on Fox Sports Houston. on Fox Sports Houston, presented by Hyundai. Live from Minute Maid Park in downtown Houston, it's the series finale between the Houston Astros and the Milwaukee Brewers. And hello again, everybody. I'm Dave Raymond, alongside Jim Deshays. The Astros with dramatic wins the first two games of this series. J.D., can they get the sweep this afternoon? It's been fun, hasn't it? Yeah, indeed, they, they can. The problem is they got to get over a big hill by the name of Giovanni Gallardo. Gallardo 10-8 this year against the league with a 379, but that's only part of the story. He's won his last nine starts against the Astros, so he, he's going to be tough. Jordan Lyles, 2-8, 569, his ERA coming off a very good start last time out. Probably need to dial up another solid one today. Well, the Astros got their first walk-off on Friday. Last night, their first extra innings win of the year, and today, they'll try to sweep the Brewers at Minute Maid Park. We got the game coming up next. Insurance Group. Call 1-800-PROGRESSIVE today.
And buy Jack in the Box. Get the All-American Jack combo for only $4.99 plus tax at participating stores. The Astros are on the field as we get set to send things to the booth. Dave Raymond sitting in for Bill Brown. He's off today. He'll be back tomorrow. And his longtime partner, Jim Deshays, guys. All right. Thank you, Greg. They're just about ready to get this thing started this afternoon. The Astros are going to sweep this series. Great opportunity for Jordan Lyles, who pitched very well his last time out. Let's see if he can continue this Astros momentum. And his first pitch right in there, strike one. And Jordan, two and eight this year, as we mentioned, uh, 569 ERA, but just three hits allowed in seven innings last time out against the Nationals. Two runs, three walks, six strikeouts, had great command of his fastball. Aoki rips this one up the middle, and the Brewers have the first base runner this afternoon. Our starting lineup today for the Astros brought to you by Hyundai, and you take a look rather at the Brewers, and Aoki starts it with a base hit. Of course, uh, the heart of the order right there, Braun Ramirez, Hart, always the key for Milwaukee, although Hart hitless so far in this three game series. Gene Segura, big addition for them, back of the eighth spot, and then Giovanni Gallardo. Uh, he can hit it himself. Yeah, he's one of the better hitting pitchers in the league. The Astros have seen plenty of that firsthand themselves as Weeks takes a strike from Jordan Lyles. Fastball, cut fastball, curveball, and occasional changeup from Jordan Lyles. He'll throw a four seam fastball, two seamer that'll run in on the righties and away from the left handed hitters. Just 21 years old. And still very much in the developmental stages of his career, JD, but already a lot of good time under his belt at the big league. Yeah, you know, he's done a lot of losing. Two and eight last year, two and eight so far this year. And, you know, the only concern is, is you know, does it get to him? Does it beat him down? And there's really been no uh, indication of that. It's a good swing and a miss there. That'd be the one concern with such a young guy that, that you know losing that many games would would get into his head and he would become defensive and not trust his ability. And I just haven't seen any evidence of that. I, I really like his upside. I think he's going to be all the better for going through this. And you, know, you can go back through and look at a lot of great pitchers in the history of this game that got off to pretty rough starts. Well, I had a Weeks here 0 and 2, and Weeks moved up in the order, batting second today, and he'll swing and miss. So, a first strike out of the afternoon for Jordan Lyles. Now, Weeks has had some of the best swings in this series for the Brewers. He had three doubles the other day, had a double yesterday, but he's beaten by the curveball here from Jordan Lyles. And the Astros defensively set up this way this afternoon. Martinez, Maxwell, Francisco left to right. Third to first is Moore, Gonzalez, Tyler Green. Who and his first started short yesterday as the second baseman, Altuve, with a rare day off. Pierce goes back and forth between first base and the outfield. And, of course, the heart and soul of this Milwaukee offense right here. Ryan Braun putting together yet another MVP-type season for Milwaukee. You see the numbers. He needs that one home run to get to another round number get him to 30 to go with his 20 stolen bases and put him in I don't know what you call it an exclusive category but a smaller group of gentlemen who have been able to go 30 20 for Milwaukee fights one off for strike one and just uh, a handful of guys among active players that have done that multiple seasons and Braun when he gets there will have done it a couple of different times I think a rod's done it four or five times Not surprising news to Astros fans to, to find out that Braun has put up good numbers against the Astros again this year. And that one will sting him for a moment. 0-2 the count, but Braun four home runs, 10 RBIs. Hitting over 360 against the Astros again this season. Lyles running that two-seam fastball under his hands, inducing that foul ball off of his foot or shin bone. That's the, one of the difference between Lyles last year and this is I think he's using his two seamer a little bit more getting more ground ball outs than he did last season. His velocity's up a couple of miles an hour as well. This is outside runner going and Naoki will steal that one for a moment and then go right past the bag. Good job by 
Green to stay right with that. Okay. Just blew the bag a little bit. Yeah, you know, that's, that's, you know, you got to be careful not to mark your scorecard too early because I started to scratch down stolen base, and it turns out not to be as Ioki comes in hard, slides to the side of the base, and then Toad just drifts off, and Tyler Green stays with the play and is able to get him. That's kind of funky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not. And Braun will take one of the dirt, two and two. Hey, Jerry Meals out there, the veteran umpire, maybe missed that one. The Astros might have caught a break, but still a good heads-up play by Green. Yeah, part of it, selling it. So a, a break goes the Astros' way, and now Lyles can make it a quick top of the first. 2-2 two -two to Ryan Braun. And that one smoked by third and in the left field. Braun with a Another hit against the Astros. That's his fourth in this series. Yeah, I looked at the numbers on him the other day. I believe coming into this series, it was 348, his batting average against the Astros in his career. Just hope to hold him down somewhat, keep him in the ballpark, and hopefully that two out single doesn't blossom. There's another guy that's worn out the Astros over the years. Now look at look at his at bats in his career compared to the entire lineup. Of the Astros today. Wow. <laughs> I'll give you a little idea yeah. what's going on. And he'll take one off the plate. Ramirez, you're right. Another guy who has punished Astros pitching over the years. Yeah, it doesn't matter whether he's a pirate, a cub, a brewer, as he makes his way around the National League Central. He's been really good against the Astros. Obviously, a lot of at bats against them because of all of his time in this division. But it's funny, it, you know, the you mentioned those career numbers for Ryan Braun, and, and I just talked about the numbers he'd put up this year. His numbers are down this year. As great as they are, they're down for what he normally does against the Astros, and same holds true for Ramirez, as good as he has been. And obviously, that's one of the big keys to beating this Brewer club, that 3-4-5 that, uh, of Braun, Ramirez, and Hart. About as good as any in the league. They almost don't consider the fact that they they miss Prince Fielder. They do. I mean, certainly he was a, a presence and changed their lineup quite a bit. But they've got enough thump as it is. All of it right-handed in those three guys, though. The 2-1. Easy roller to short. And Gonzalez goes the short way to finish off the inning. A couple of hits, but the Brewers do nothing with it. Astros get their chance coming up. And we get another look at the Astros in the flashback unit. Look at Baggy. 
And look at look at the success. And look the at the flowers. Has. Yes. But look at all that success in the blue and gold uniform. That's a you know, no losing seasons in that stretch. And, and can't get enough of uh, Chucky Carr. I mean, anytime you get a chance to <laughs> drop a little Chucky Carr video in there, we're going for it. Yeah, great run. Well, our starting lineups for the Astros today brought to you by Hyundai. And you take a look, Tyler Green with his second start at the top of the order today at second base. But this entire lineup, Gonzalez and Pierce at the top, Maxwell Moore, Francisco in the middle, Martinez, Snyder forming the bottom of the order. None of those eight men in this Astros organization last year. Again, sort of framing this rebuilding project that the Astros are uh, underway with right now as Green goes after the first pitch and dropped it in for a base hit. He's going to try for two, and he's in there with the belly flopper. As Gomez missed the target near second base, and good heads up base running by Green, who does have good speed. Wow, and, and Tyler Green, my goodness, you talk about making a first impression. This guy's been something else. Doubling a home run last night, picks on the first pitch from Gallardo here this afternoon. Drives it into center field and not willing to settle for one. He turns it into a leadoff double. Great opportunity for him. Tyler Green, a former first round pick. And really was never able to settle in in St. Louis. Looks like he's going to get a nice opportunity here. Gallardo's offering to Marwin Gonzalez finds a corner. And check out these numbers. 14 starts against the Astros. He's 12 and 2 with a 261. Two of those coming this year. He's won his last nine starts against Houston. Yeah, that's a pretty good run. And Marwin trying to advance the runner. It's now one and one. I mean, it's one thing to go nine consecutive starts and factor in a decision. Even that's hard to do, but to go nine straight and get the win, yeah, yeah, that's could, impressive. Yeah, you could see like you know five and zero oh with four no decisions or something like that. But he just goes out and he wins every one. Well, and part of that is because he's able to go deep. And let's face it, the Brewers need him to go deep today. About nine, <laughs> to be specific. Ron Raneke would be a big fan of that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Ron was. Uh, a little short with the, the media yesterday talking about that very thing when asked about his bullpen options. He was like you know, throwing up his hand saying you tell me guys you got any better ideas. <laughs> Clearly frustrated. Brewers do a lot of things well they score a lot of runs. Pretty good defensively they steal a lot of bases. The bullpen's been brutal. One two to Marwin. And that one may stay fair it does. Green will come home. Gonzalez should have a double. And the Astros draw first blood this afternoon. One to nothing in the first inning. And Tyler Green going on the steps there, J.D. He may be telling these guys, hey, it's not so much the uh, the uniforms, fellas. <laughs> you might notice what happened since I joined the club. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I, I guarantee he's already made that point. I don't know what the problem is, fellas. I'm undefeated. The Astros win this one and they're off to a nice start. They might be wearing those uniforms on the airplane. <laughs> just, just treat it like Legion ball, you know, just wear your uni, get on the bus, sleep in them. Why not? Now they had to petition Major League Baseball. They had to get the also the permission of the Brewers to wear these uniforms again last night and again today. And I guess uh, appreciative that the the Brewers have played along. 1 0 and Pierce looks a high fly right field. Aoki there to take care of it. And Gonzalez will try to advance, does so. Amaro not the fleetest of foot, but Aoki, well, the scouting report on Aoki uh, coming into Major League Baseball this year out of Japan Central League was he does not have a great arm. And that throw, not a bad one, just a little off the mark. Yeah, it looked like he had a little difficulty getting it out of his glove. But I like the aggressive uh, approach by the Astros. First green turning that base into a double and now Marwin advancing there. Here are the Brewers defensively. Gomez can really get after it in center field. He's worth keeping an eye on. He usually does something exciting every time he's out there. Segura, the new kid, has really played nicely at, at shortstop. 
He's a uh, converted second baseman, but he's, he's been just fine over there at short. Well, Brewers bringing everybody up now. With Maxwell up there. Now, Maxwell with very good power, very raw power. And he's been on a, a terrific run lately. You see those numbers? I mean, the 12 home runs, and then all the run production, relatively few at bats. He takes a pretty good one there. Yeah, he's uh, what uh, every 16 point something at bats he goes deep. A little check swing there on a first pitch slider from Gallardo, who's basically a three pitch pitcher, fastball, slider, and curveball. He has a change up, but doesn't use it very much. A bouncer to short. Segura has got his man. Gonzalez trying to buy as much time as possible here is tagged out by Ramos Ramirez, but it does allow Maxwell to get to second base. A 6 2 5 put out between third and home. Good job by Marwin Gonzalez. That's a play where he's going on contact, and many times you see that guy break down the third base line and just run into an easy out at home plate. But good recognition here. He knows he's not going to beat the play at the plate, so he slams on the brakes, stays in the rundown long enough to allow Maxwell to get into scoring position. So the two outs, not much loss there. Maxwell in position where he'll score on most base hits. Scott Moore, the man who delivered the big base hit last night. Bottom of the 10th inning to give the Astros their first extra innings victory of the season. So more back in there again today. Boy, the average has been on a steady decline for Moore. When he joined the team, he got off to a, a great start. Whoa. What happened there? Gallardo not at his sharpest in the early goings here today. A couple of doubles. Two oh, and that's when you're looking for something good, but Moore did not see it. So Gallardo now in danger of putting a, another man on. Gallardo coming off uh, a couple of really good starts last time out against the Reds he allowed one run in seven innings and the previous start was against the Houston over in Milwaukee same story there seven innings three hits a run that was a 10 to 1 Brewer win. Boy he'll put more on for free missed badly on four pitches. Now he had 56 walks in 140 innings coming in. Which is to say he's neither real stingy with the walks but he also you know generally has enough command to yeah and to I throw, think, throw yeah, it in there yeah, I, you know having watched him pitch over the years I think he's a guy with good command who's willing to put people on base in certain counts certain situations he'll tiptoe around a hitter and you know normally you don't advise it in the first inning but I get a sense that's what he was doing there once he fell behind more he didn't want to give in would rather go after a right handed hitter so Ben Francisco is that man. And nobody trying to move up on that pitch that got away and from McDonald. Maldonado just cost his pitcher that ball was right down the middle. But he boxed it. And it's hard to get the call when when that happened. But it looked like a real good pitch. Yeah. Fox track agrees. A lot of run on that fastball. You know the velocity. Has not really been there though. Early on here for Gallardo. He's only thrown one pitch in excess of 90 miles per hour in this first inning. I don't know. Maybe he's still warming up. Maybe, yeah, you know, I, yeah, it might be just a matter of not uh, quite getting it there. And, and, you know, seven innings in each of his last two starts. And a lot of times that's what happens when a pitcher's on a nice roll. The innings will pile up and uh, he'll just go through a start or two where he doesn't have his best stuff. Two out of Francisco, and that should do it. Segura. Going to second base, inning over. But the Astros get the run back to back doubles. Starting things off, Tyler Green showing off his speed. Gonzalez getting him home. And we'll go to the second.
return to the playing field on Friday if they actually ever leave as the Astros take on the Diamondbacks for Flashback Friday presented by the Methodist Hospital System. Astros great Brad Osmus will toss the ceremony of first pitch and fans can enjoy Friday Night Fireworks presented by Marathon Oil Corporation. Root now and buy tickets for Flashback Friday at Astros.com. Bill? Thanks, Jane. And, oh, and a geez, that's just so habit. <laughs> Dave? Dave Jordan. and Dave. Thanks, Patty. So, We're going back to comrades. We, we, yeah, comrades or uh, Beavis and Butthead is fine, Patty. No, whatever whatever you want to go with. It's fine. It's Sorry, fine. Dave. <laughs> Franklin? That's, that's tough for a neighbor. I mean, that hurt. That hurt. Anyway, Hart with a, a butt attempt. That strike you that a, a little odd right there? Uh, well, you know, he, he does that every now and then. He's a big man, but he'll play the little man's game uh, from time to time. He's got good speed. I've seen him get away with it. Well, now, Maldonado. Who handled that button? I wouldn't even watch Lyles. it. Lyles. A little one three put out. Okay. I was fixing myself some tea over here. Got a little throat thing. I want to. Well, you get the yeah. peppermints going there. You're, yeah. you're in pretty good shape. We got another problem. I want to discuss oh. with everybody here momentarily. <laughs> Here's the one strike, bitch. The, uh, this whole blue and gold thing. Yeah. I don't see blue when I look at this uniform. I, well, uh, where, why are we calling this blue? It, well, it's a navy blue. It's a dark navy blue. Is it blue. really? Absolutely. I don't think so. Do you think that's, that's do you black. think that's a black? Yeah. I think if you got up close. Is that right? You'd feel the blue. Another strikeout. Snyder will finish it. Maldonado down for the second out of the inning. That's two K's in the early goings for Jordan Lyles. And uh, if you recall the Ricky Week strikeout, it too was a curveball. So a couple of good hooks for strikeouts from Lyles first weeks. Now Maldonado chasing that good breaker down. 21 year old from Hartsville, South Carolina. It was also the birthplace of the great Bobo Newsom, which for a long time in the major leagues won over 200 ball games. Here's Carlos Gomez now. And Lyles staying with that curveball. Nothing on the appeal from Scott Berry down at first base. And not to uh, diminish, you know, the, the value of Carlos Corporan since he's been up and, and Jason Castro, who looks like he'll be returning very shortly, possibly even tomorrow. But I love what Chris Snyder has done back there behind the plate working with these young Astros pitchers, you know, Lyle and Harrell in particular. Real solid veteran backstop. Miles misses outside two and one. I was going to ask you about him today because, well, Jordan has worked with everybody. Castro caught him seven times early. Corp Ron caught him third time, three times rather. Snyder now for the seventh time this year. That little bouncer going to be trouble and no play for Green. Gomez with an infield hit. And it brings up Segura. But so he's had to work with three different catchers this year. That's not totally no. unusual, but. Not easy. Not easy. And, and, you know, I was looking back at then the specific matchup, Snyder and, uh, and Lyles. First two were a little rough. But the last four starts, last four times these guys have worked together. I've been pretty good. Yeah, including last time out. And, and, you know, what Snyder did with Lyles last time is what he's done with Harrell, and that's established fastball to both sides of the plate. And here he goes again, sneaking inside on Segura. Ooh, quick toss, and Gomez got back in there. Gomez, very athletic, good speed, and sometimes a bit reckless. So a guy worth watching at first. Miles takes his time and yeah, I would think unless Ron Renicky gives him a don't go sign. He'll be looking to steal a bag here pretty soon. 21 successful steals this year for Gomez. Miles again. Oh, two pretty good moves JD also. Nice job with that with that tempo. You're trying to hold it maybe just that extra second longer. Yeah, try to freeze the don't, you know, you know, obviously you, you don't want the guy on first base, the base runner to get into a sense of rhythm of when you come set, when you deliver, come set, deliver. And once he gets a sense of that timing, he's going to get a much better jump on you. 
something so, doing on yeah, the pitch out. Yeah, and that time he quick pitched on a pitch out, and you really don't want to do that. When when you call a pitch out from the dugout, you want the guy to go. And so you don't want to quick pitch him and, and, and have a guy who might be thinking about running shut down because you deliver the ball so quickly to home plate. You go ahead and take your, your full wind up and your leg kick and all that. You're you're hoping he's going. That's why you call the pitch out. Sometimes as pitchers, we make the mistake if we see the pitch out and well, they think he's going. So not only am I going to pitch out, but I'm going to be really quick delivering that ball to home plate. Sometimes the fact that you're so quick just shuts the guy down. The whole point of the pitch out is the, that, that you, you wouldn't yeah, need to yeah. be quick to the plate. Yeah. Not going again. That one lined into left field. Segura with that base hit has set the Brewers up now in this second inning, but the pitcher, Giovanni Gallardo, coming up. Segura guy again. He was uh, acquired in the deal with the Angels for Zach Granke, and Segura was one of the top Angels prospects. And you know about all the good young players they have over there, the Trumbo Trout combination. So they, they brought a lot of good young players to the big leagues in recent years. And Segura, another one that was in that pipeline that was very highly regarded. And whether he's the Brewer shortstop next year or not remains to be seen. But throughout his minor league career, he hit for a high average. Gallardo, very good hitter. In fact, among Brewers pitchers in their history, the best power hitting pitcher they've ever had. And the Astros have seen him twice go yard. In fact, I think his last home run was against the Astros and Nelson Figueroa. Now the count one and one. And nine career home runs. In 2010, he won the Silver Slugger Award. Hit 254 that year with four bombs for a pitcher. Man, that's unbelievably good. Gotta be careful with him. Swings to pretty good fastball there from Lyles, 93 miles per hour. And that's been one of the things this year for Jordan. The, the velocity to me this year has, uh, of all things you want to look at with Jordan Lyles, the velocity has gone up. This yeah, year. big time. Uh, you know, at least a couple miles an hour. On average, and at times he's really lit up that radar gun. There's a good piece of hitting. Single to right field. They're going to send Gomez. The throws off line, and we've got a tie game. So Gallardo indeed does cash in the at bat. Segura, meanwhile, gets to third base. 1 1. Off the bat, I thought they might have a shot at Gomez. But with two outs, he's moving with the swing. The solid line drive single here from uh, Gallardo. Francisco just does not get a lot on that throw, and it's up the line a little bit. And again, Gomez, one of the faster guys in the league. So Lyle's not out of trouble yet. In fact, that's five early hits for Milwaukee. And it all started with this guy, Norichka Aoki, who steps in now. And two outs, nobody on when it started in this inning. And, you know, it's, it's been innings like this that have kind of defined Jordan's season. He, he, you know, earlier on, he'd, he'd give you four or five innings of one run baseball, and in the middle innings, uh, you know, he just give up a string of hits, wasn't able to minimize the damage when he's good. And obviously, it makes. Sense that when he's good, he stops the other team from putting, putting that big inning together. But th this is one that could get out of hand here with the lineup turning over and you know, Weeks and Braun to follow Aoki. On the 1 1, and an easy candy hop right there for Pierce. He'll take it himself, inning over, tied at 1.
Miller time later in today's game brought to you by Miller Light. I think it already is yeah. Miller well, time for, for that fella. some. Yeah. Nothing wrong yeah, with that. Yeah, get a shot of you in the front row. <laughs> What a successful campaign that was. Remember all those oh, Miller Light ads? Oh, yeah. There's Uke. What you know, all those cups for? <laughs> What's that for? He's, he's got a lot of friends. <laughs> can, I, can I have a party in there? Well, we'll check back in the, about the fourth or fifth inning, and, and he may indeed have one going. Maybe there's one for each inning, and he peels them off. That's how he knows the game's over. Well, Fernando Martinez to lead off the inning. Gallardo hoping to maybe settle down a little bit in this second. Astros got to him for a run on a couple of doubles and a walk. A little off speed work to Martinez. It's 0 2. Yeah, I think if you were to ask hitters in the National League what Gallardo's best pitch was, they most would say the curveball. He's got a nice assortment of pitches, but that, that curveball is. Really tough. Fernando taps it towards second. Good hustle play by Ricky Weeks to get it to first in time. Weeks had to come after that thing a little bit. It was a day when Fernando Martinez was as fast a guy out there. The knees have held him up a little bit in recent years. Yeah, but he still runs well. Doesn't have the blazing speed he once had. But he made that awfully close. Good play by Weeks and Gallardo getting over there to cover. I was surprised, you know, because, you know, I haven't seen a whole lot of Fernando Martinez. Yeah, I got to tell you something about that guy. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, uh, well. Bus driver let him back the bus in. Oh, really? He actually got to back the Brewer bus down the ramp. <laughs> you get to do whatever he yeah. wants. I guess. I asked him if that was a, you know, if that was one of those uh, dreams he wanted to do before he kicked the bucket. And he said, no, no. I said that. Driver uh, said he was retiring pretty soon. <laughs> so, so it was a risk he was willing to take. <laughs> yeah, he took a shot. There were players on the bus, too. That's you. You still has a, a locker in the clubhouse. Oh, yeah. He, he like showers there every day. Yeah, yeah, he works out with the boys in the whirlpool in the training room. Only two to Snyder now. He fights one off. It's great. You know this. The Brewers have now lost 11 straight games on the road with uh, these first two dramatic wins for the Astros. They've only had one road losing skid in their franchise's history. Longer. Snyder chases that breaking ball in the dirt, and there are two gone. First strikeout today for Giovanni Gallardo. Again, it's, it's the curveball. So we got a theme developing. You're battling curveballs. Lyles with a couple strikeouts with his, and now Gallardo starting to get the feel. For his breaking pitch. Yeah, Brewers are 18 and 35 on the road. Better only than the Cubs and the Astros. These bottom clubs in the Central had a hard time on the road. Lyle to try and help his cause here takes ball one, but yeah, the, the road has been especially cruel to the Brewers lately with 11 straight. Their longest road losing skid 17 games. And you got to go back ways. You got to go pre uke You know, and their pre franchise is where you can, where you can really give perspective to something like that by saying, well, it's pre Milo, it's pre Euchre. So what, what are we talking? Like, 1970, the year the Seattle Pilots went oh, okay. the wrong yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Pilots left spring training and instead of heading to Seattle, they went to Milwaukee, and then the next year, Euchre joined the broadcast crew. And so that's a team that not only lost. All those road games in a row, but they just, just miserable. Yeah. Overall, uh, this club is is kind of bizarre in that they're seven, seven games above 500 at home. They're divi a defending division champion. They get a lot of talented players. Two two to Lyles, and he'll line this one center field base hit. So both pitchers this afternoon able to take care of business at the plate as well. Lyles was hitting 083 before that swing of the bat, and I know what an 083 hitter looks like because that's kind of my ballpark, and he's not. He's a really good athlete. He'll figure it out as his career goes along. You see that 083 hitter pretty yeah, much every day. Yes, I know. 
And you, sir, are no 083 hitter. Here's Tyler Green, doubled in the first inning. And it's been a real nice addition in these first couple of days. And the other uh, advantage of having a good athlete like Lyles, uh, not only can he handle the bat a little bit, and again, he hasn't shown it yet, but he will. Uh, he runs well. So he's a guy who could score on a double here. And Green's got some pop. And throughout his minor league career as a guy who, you know, typically hit 12 to 15 home runs a season. A lot of doubles. Plenty of upside to Tyler Green's makeup, the 1-1. One, one. And, ooh, Gallardo catches that lower portion of the zone right there. But has just had a tough time really putting all the pieces together with the St. Louis Cardinals. Jeff Luno knew him well from his days with St. Louis and happy to give him a shot here in an Astros uniform. Now the one two. They'll live to see another one. Gallardo trying to wear out that outside corner first with fastballs on the breaking ball away. Wake up sir. Try to take a shot inside with a fastball, or he may just continue to work away. That ball popped up, but out of play. Stays two and two on Tyler Green. Well, Gallardo, born in Mexico, but grew up in Texas, always has a lot of family and, and friends who come over when he pitches here at Minute Maid Park. I'm sure there's at least some element of that that's that a bit of a distraction. Yeah, it can be for sure. Especially early in a guy's career. So you learn how to manage it. You know, you know you've got to learn how to say no to people. Ah, I can't do dinner. I can't do this. Again, you know, because you can end up being the Pied Piper and just toting around a whole bunch of people and it could really be distracting, especially late in the year, boy. You got to preserve your energy. Well, late in the year and then maybe even, you know, if you're the. The starter in the final game of the series, right? I mean, he gets it out of the way day one. He's got yeah. the next couple of days to hang out. 2 2. Oh, yeah, now we've got a full count, and Lyles will get a head start at first base. Yeah, I used to, I grew up in northern New York on the Canadian border, so I used to always have family that would come to Montreal, and I actually preferred it when I wasn't scheduled to pitch. It was more fun. Well, you pitchers have that luxury, of course. Uh, everyday third baseman, an outfielder. <laughs> they don't get to, they don't get to duck the games and just hang out. But Gallardo, full count, and that ball hit well left field. Braun thinks he has room, and he does. Inning over. It's just gotten in a little bit on Tyler Green, so the Astros come up empty, still tied at one. Snack at the ball game. 
And a little AT&T trivia to go with that ice cream. Well, Milwaukee won its only World Series, the 57 Braves. Who was the series MVP? Mm. That's a good one. 1957, Milwaukee Braves. Well, uh, I mean, there's some big names, Spahn, I guess, on that team. Yeah. Aaron, Adcock, Eddie Matthews. Matthew Matthews. You think okay, you covered it with those right well, there? No, here, I think we got I, it. I'm just looking for one clue from the truck. Is it somebody that would be, oh, of course, he was a great player, or is it more of an obscure uh, Brian Doyle type series MVP? No clues. No clues. <laughs> Man, it's a tough crowd. <laughs> well, the two, three, and four do this inning for the Brewers. And Lyles gets it off to a good start with a fastball to Weeks. Now, Lyles, this is a story we have told over and over again this year. His success uh, a lot of times seems to tail off as the game wears on. And guys get second and third looks at it. Now, this is the second time through for the Brewers here. Managed to get Aoki to end that second inning. And one and one here to Ricky Weeks. Yeah, that batting average third time around in particular is quite high. That's what was so nice about his last outing. Seven innings and he allowed just three hits. So he was able to work around a pretty deep uh, in Washington lineup. And yeah, that was likely his best effort of the year. The two one weeks will bounce it foul. Weeks has been one of the more productive brewers in this series. Four for eight. A three double effort on Friday. And has moved up in the order. Renicky likes him up there in that second spot if he's if he's going well. Might see some fastballs ahead of the, the big sluggers. And he gets one there, but just missed. Yeah, he's always been a good fastball hitter. Very quick bat. Turn on that inside fastball. Struggled much of the year to get his average up above 200. Really surprising. He's such a good solid hitter. Not, not, not a Braun type guy, but pretty solid credentials for a while now as a major league hitter. Breaking ball and Weeks went around. Snyder will finish it off. And another strikeout for Jordan Lyles, his third this afternoon. Well, who was this? 57 World Series MVP. We didn't say Lou Burdett. We did not. Let's say him now. Yeah. All right. We got a little technical oh, yeah. difficulty in the truck, so we're going to no gonna, hints, gonna, gonna no answer. Linger a little longer, folks. <laughs> there it is. There you go. Ah, Lou Burdett. There you know, 0.67 ERA. Braun goes after the first pitch. Playable for more. Two away. Luber dead, huh? Boy, it was uh, a star started team, but check this out. Uh, his grandson is Nolan Fontana. The Astros signed him this year, second round pick in this June's draft. So some pretty good DNA working there for Fontana. Don't focus too much on the average. Slide your eyes to the right a little bit. You notice the 42 walks already. And so that on base percentage has to be well into the 400s. Yeah, he's an on-base machine, was when he played at Florida and, and has shown it again already in his short and very early pro career as Aramis Ramirez takes ball one. You guys got to talk to him on TV uh, earlier this year, right? 486 the on-base percentage for Nolan. Yeah, I think, uh, I think maybe Bart or Patty interviewed him. A chance to catch up with him after he signed. Now... Lou was a character and apparently when Lou decided it was time to retire just hanging up went into the clubhouse asked the clubby for a hammer and a nail and hammered his glove to the wall and said I'm done yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> it. I like it <laughs> oh Ramirez up there hacking one and two now didn't uh, John Cruck shut it down he got a base hit to get his career average to right, right at 300 and then just kind of Walked off. I'm done. Up to the clubhouse. Yeah. See you, boys. Taking it to the house. 
was a pitcher in the minor leagues years ago. Mark Lee, I believe his name was. Just peeled his jersey off out on the mound <laughs> when he was done. I'm sure there are a few who have felt like that at one point or another. Oh gosh. <laughs> the 2 2 from Lyles. That ball smoked but foul. Again, Snyder doing a nice job. The curveball obviously working well for Jordan here this afternoon. And what really helps to set it up is, you know, the fastball in. Make the hitter aware of both sides of the plate with the hard stuff. It's going to be that much more difficult for the hitter to, to handle the outside breaking ball. And that breaking ball this time too far outside. Ramirez, you know, he's a slugger. Hits for great power, always has. Third baseman with 15 home runs this year for the Brewers, but he's only struck out 55 times. He's managed to contain the strikeouts, especially this year. And bounces this to second base. Green on top of it, and it's a 1 2 3 third inning for Jordan Lyles. And the game stays tied. Uniforms in his second straight shutout. Randy Johnson fanned 13 on his way to a five hit three nothing win against Milwaukee. He improved to three and oh with an 0 0.72 since joining the Astros. Also on this night in 2007 Craig Vigil was honored before the game for his 3000th hit a few games earlier. That was against the Brewers. He went out that night and hit a home run as the Astros beat the Brewers 6 4. This is a pretty big date for the Astros and the Brewers it seems. Uh, what Randy end up with a uh, what one one nine ERA that year something like that yeah what well, 11 and 11 and one or something for the Astros something like that yeah that's, it was electric when he pitched in the dome two three and four in this third inning for the Astros as Marlon Gonzalez takes strike one and you'd agree uh, most people refer to that 98 team as the most talented maybe the best well they won 102 ball games. Um, yeah, they were <laughs> certainly the team that finished playing the year once we added Randy to the rotation. And uh, you know, Bagwell and Bizio still in their prime. Moises Alou tore it up that year. Yeah, you know, that, they got beat by the Padres in the uh, playoffs, but you, you can't convince me that they weren't the best team in baseball that year. Mayardo's 1 1, and Gonzalez stays alive. Marwin doubled in the first inning. Driving home the Astros run this afternoon. Be interesting to see. You know, a lot of times with a with a good starting pitcher, and I think Gallardo falls in that category. You know, the thinking is, if you're going to get to him, you're going to get to him early. And the Astros, to their credit, they they cashed in those two doubles early for a run. But as this game wears on, and we're only in the third inning, you do start to fear that that he may lock it down yeah, a little the bit. Crooked number would have been, uh, yeah. What you were hoping for there early. 
He's one two to Marwin. But the, yeah, that, that's the norm, isn't it? With a starting pitcher, you know, get them early before they get locked in, or get them late when they start to fatigue. You know, guys like Gallardo generally, once they settle in, they're 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 tough to do a lot of damage against until he starts to tire. And then Ron Renneke's up against it. You know, when he gets to that point where Gallardo's fatiguing a little bit, how long does he stretch him because his bullpen has been so bad? I would guess he'd be tempted to to push the envelope a little bit today with Gallardo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would think. And you know, we had a great example of it here the other day when uh, the, the Nationals bullpen had been worked hard, and, and Davey Johnson leaned on Gio Gonzalez, and Gonzalez went the distance. Well, Marwin Gonzalez. Watches ball three, so another full count. And the Astros have done a good job of working the count early on against Giovanni Gallardo. Uh, Marwin, especially from the left side, gives you a good, tough at bat. Getting nearly 290 from the left side. And fights off another one versus one, well, a little under 120. From the right side of the plate, certainly a different hitter from this side. And you know, Rule Five draft pick, and typically Rule Five draft pick is a guy that you, you just you want to get into your system. He was exposed by the other team to that draft. Most times, that player is not ready to play in the big leagues. That's not the case with Marwin. If Marwin had not been a Rule Five draft pick, uh, you could easily have seen him be in the big leagues with somebody this year. Rolls one on the ground to first. Corey Hart will take care of it with a little help from. His pitcher Gallardo, and that is out number one. And they also did a nice job in that draft, taking advantage of the fact that the Cubs had depth. They had Starlin Castro at shortstop. They feel like they're set for years and years and years at the position, so they didn't protect Marwin. The Astros swooped in and picked him up. They got a pretty good player on their hands. Not often you see a team ride through a season with two Rule Five guys, like the Astros are trying to do this yeah, year: Marwin Gonzalez and Reiner Cruz. Most clubs just don't have room on the roster to accommodate it. But when you're rebuilding like the Astros are, that's, you know, that's the one advantage, silver lining, I guess you would say, of being in this position. Now, Steve Pierce, guy who joined the, the ball club midstream this year. And we said it at the beginning of the game. You, you look at this lineup, and nary a soul outside of starting pitcher. Jordan Lyles was in this organization last year. I mean, they are all new faces, and a lot of them picked up along the way. Couldn't hold up. Yeah, almost like an expansion team. You know, pluck a bunch of guys off other teams' rosters. A little extra work for that man right there, Brad Mills. A lot of the parts, though, interchangeable. He's able to shuffle guys all over the place on the diamond. Infielders that play outfield and vice versa, the one two misses. I mean, I'm sure there's some managers who, who would love to have that luxury. And then there are others who figure, well, that's a that's a byproduct of not having a real uh, sturdy lineup or roster for that matter. Yeah, and then, you know, in the perfect world, a manager would tell you he'd prefer to be able to go in, in that lineup card every day and write. Craig Biggio, second base, Jeff Bagwell, first base, Lance Berkman, left field, you know. But when, when you don't have that kind of personnel, you have to try to make it all blend together. And I would imagine that that's fun to, to a certain extent. Another payoff from Gallardo, and he finds the corner. Strike three called, and that is his second punch out today. Uh, number six there on Fox Tracks. That's a Perfect pitcher's pitch just above the knees on the outside corner. Steve thought perhaps it was down, maybe out. Contemplated issuing a formal complaint with the judge, but decided to save it for another day. <laughs> well, Justin Maxwell. So this, this speaks to your point earlier about a, a talented pitcher settling in. Now Gallardo. Banging away at that outside corner consistently keeping it out of the part of the strike zone. And look at that. That's the same spot. <laughs> that's, that's, that's pitching 101 right there. And the velocity's back up too now. He's been 92, 93 a little more consistently now in the third inning, whereas he, he was he was not even getting to 90 miles per hour in the first. So 
Sometimes it's that just that one up and down at inning into the dugout and then back out for pitcher reaches max velocity. Just missed that time. Well, and sometimes it takes that cup of coffee just to, to kick in. Yeah, yeah. Time yeah, to yeah, especially in a day the game, you know, you got the program the programs changed a little bit. Base is empty with two out for Maxwell. And he'll go down looking. Second strike out of the inning, third this afternoon for Gallardo, who's dialed it in. We're tied at one. The Astros host the Diamondbacks at 7.05, and 10,000 fans will receive a 1990s blue and gold star cap presented by Xfinity. Root now and buy tickets at Astros.com. Back to you, David Raymond. Thank you, Patty Smith. All right. Fourth inning, it's Hart, Maldonado, and Gomez for Milwaukee. Lyles held himself pretty well so far off a perfect third inning. And goes one and one with Corey Hart. Hart has been hitless in this series. He's 0 for 10 with five strikeouts. And that's not going to get it done. A little roller to first. Picked up by Pierce. He'll take care of it himself. One away. Seems like Hart has been a big story in the season series. And home runs a bigger story for Milwaukee. You see they lead the National League in long balls. When they hit them, they win. When they don't hit home runs, 7 and 35. And the disparity in the wins and losses in this season series couldn't be more dramatic. I mean, six of the six of the games the Astros have, have beaten the Brewers, four of them they did, they did not go yard, including both games in this series. Yeah, they've been able to keep them in the ballpark, and the Astros have managed to win the first two games. It's a, a little bit surprising because when you look at the Brewers club, you don't think of them as a one dimensional, just a slugging team. Uh, we talked about it earlier. They've got a lot of guys, Braun and Gomez and others, who, who steal and they can manufacture runs. But certainly the, the long ball, a big part of it, has been for a while now in Milwaukee. One strike pitch to Maldonado, and that one falls in there. Lyles jumping ahead of the Brewers catcher. Yeah, you would you would suspect that the Brewers would find other ways to win. I guess maybe the, the home runs augment the other things they do so well. It makes them almost impossible to beat when they're when they're hitting homers. Lyles, that has been maybe an issue for him this year. I think when you look at his overall numbers, you know you'll notice 18 home runs, most surrendered by any Astros pitcher this year, and that was in just short of 92 innings. Maldonado fights yeah, one off. That's, and that's uh, two things the, the home runs allowed, and then uh, left handed hitters. Uh, 
he hasn't really been able to neutralize them most of the year. They came into this game hitting 338 against him. Again, the, the signs in recent starts have been very positive. And the one two to Maldonado, and he won't take the bait that time. Lyles has retired the last five hitters he's faced. He gave up five hits to the Brewers their first time through the lineup, which is the inverse of what we have seen so much this season. Since then, has really settled in. Oh, Man, he just my. missed to Maldonado. Yeah. Very similar to what we saw Gallardo do last inning, pounding that outside corner with a fastball. Maybe just off that edge. So far, David Rackley's been, been pretty good, hadn't he? Pretty consistent, yeah. A bouncer at third base, backing up on it more, and the long throw, a good one. Two gone in the fourth inning. Carlos Gomez, he's dropped down in the order a little bit for Milwaukee. It's funny, Ron Renick, he said, you know, he likes weeks up high in the order, especially the way he's been swinging the bat. He's over two with two punch outs today. Gomez dropped down in the order. Well, he's singled in the second and has scored the Brewers' only run so far this afternoon. Well, Gomez is the kind of guy you'd love to have his speed at the top of the order, but just does not have the on base presence. Hardly ever walks. Strikes out a bunch. And he'll take the occasional big rip as he did right there. I would describe him as toolsy. A lot of stuff going on with Gomez. He's in a hole now 0-2. Yeah, he's he's like that, you know, that thoroughbred horse that needs to learn how to race. He's, he's got the skill set. Just a little wild. This game is very raw. A high chopper at third base. Moore with a good charge and the throw just in time to get the speeding Gomez to put up another perfect inning for Jordan Lyles. Progressive today by the all-new Mazda CX-5 with 35 highway miles per gallon and by Mattress Firm. Save money and sleep happy. Bill Brown's not with us today. He's at the Don't, Don't, uh, Don't Sweat It Golf Tournament. That's to raise money for ectothermal dysplasias. And so will his book, My Baseball Journey, the Sportscaster's Story. Bill Brown and Tim Gregg combined. To order your copy and for more information, MyBaseballJourney.com. Again, the proceeds go for the National Foundation for Ectodermal Displacious. Guys? All right, thanks, Greg. Scott Moore, busy in the field in the top half of the inning. 
starts this bottom of the fourth and Ben Francisco and Fernando Martinez. Some concern perhaps that Gallardo is finding his rhythm and I thought last inning JD that his tempo you know improved a little bit too. He's getting the ball now and seems prepared to go immediately. Yeah and he's gotten into a nice rhythm with his catcher knows where he wants to go with the pitch and I don't know how much Maldonado has caught him that may be part of it too. Maldonado tries to figure out Gallardo's game plan for the day and vice versa. Two one to more. And that'll leave in the count. Scott walked in the first inning the only walk issued by either pitcher. So far in this afternoon's game. And that was in that first inning where Gallardo was just a, a tad rocky. That said, he is he has had a couple of full counts today, and here's another one. So Gallardo, we talked about it earlier, maybe intending to go deep in today's ball game and save Ron Renneke the agony of having to use his bullpen. But the, the high pitch count may ultimately catch up to him. It's payoff. And another called third strike. That's three straight strikeouts, all of them looking for Gallardo. Well, and again, this time he clips the inside corner to the left-handed hitter. He he's, seems to be more comfortable shooting for that corner, and that's uh, kind of cuts across the grain. Typically, pitchers can go to their arm side more consistently than they can glove side. But he's been able to bang away at that corner, away to the righty, in on the lefty, with regularity here this afternoon. And I think too, what he's done by throwing those good curveballs early, he's the you know, hitters are kind of aware of that curveball, and he's been able to lock them up with fastballs. Francisco, for a moment there, appearing as if he wanted to bunt his way on. Pierce, Maxwell, and Moore in succession caught looking all at fastballs. One one to Francisco. And right through it. Francisco grounded out of the first inning. Just pulls pulls off that ball every now and then. He did it last night. He took a big swing, pulled off, and then the very next pitch he took a slider and hammered it into the alley in left center. Well, these two clubs in the uh, bottom of the National League Central Division. A lot of focus on the top. Pittsburgh has just put a seven spot on the board. And they're still scoring. They lead San Diego eight to five in Pittsburgh. There he goes again. Man, he's locked in another called strike three on a fastball. And he just owns that corner of home plate right now. This is a clinic. And he gets on top to the angle, the way he drives that ball from high to low into the zone. Pretty impressive stuff. So once you're able to, to hit that same spot every single time, right? I mean, you feel as a pitcher as if everything's now under control? Well, yeah, until, unless somebody knocks you off your rocker. You know, you're still going to make mistakes. You know, the, the Greg Maddox, I think, said it best once. You know, this whole idea of a pitcher maybe gives up a home run or two and he says, I only made two mistakes. You never only make two mistakes. You, you got burned by two of your mistakes, but in every game you're going to throw a number of pitches where you, you don't locate or you make a mistake out over the heart of the plate. It's what you get away with. Sometimes it tells a story, but uh, you can get into a zone out there where before you make the pitch, you know you're going to execute the pitch and you can almost predict the outcome of the pitch because you got such a good feel for your game and the way the hitters are reacting to your stuff. A lot of times you decide, I'm going to throw this fastball down and away. And he's going to hit a lazy fly ball to right field, and boom, it happens. Martinez waits on a 2 1. And a little flare could be trouble left center. Coming on, though, Ryan Braun. Does a nice job out there and completes the inning for Gallardo. Still tied at one going to the fifth.
to What Do You Drive? Looking ahead to game one of the series in Chicago. Armando Galarraga going to the hill for the Astros. In his last outing against Washington, Galarraga had a tough time getting loose. Allowed three runs early in that game. He settled down after that and pitched pretty well in the game. The Astros ended up losing 4-3. Those consistency issues have been plaguing him throughout the, uh, the season here so far with the Strohs. He'll try to get that worked out as he goes up against right-hander Jeff Samarja. That's your Mazda game break. Let's go back to Dave and J.D. And as we do, guys, a little update. Former Astro Clint Farmers with a grand slam for the Pirates oh, today. Yes, very good. Oh, look at Barmy. It's been a tough year for him at the plate. As Segura leads things off for Milwaukee. Segura batting eight, singled in the second inning. In this 1-1 game, that was part of the very brief Brewers rally this afternoon. And they'll take a strike. After Segura's base hit, it was Giovanni Gallardo. All of the hits coming with two outs, and Gallardo then delivered the Brewers RBI today. Yeah, that was, that's the one pitch I'm sure Jordan would like to get back uh, because he had the jump on. Gallardo two strikes and he just kind of left him a fastball up out over the plate. A fairly easy pitch to get to. 2 1 to Segura. Broken bat and roller to short. Gonzalez in the hole and can't get it there in time. You know, that one just enough sting taken out when that bat splintered. You could hear it crack. And with Segura's speed, you knew it might be trouble. Yeah, and he got a nice break out of the box. A lot of times when you see a hitter jammed like that, it takes him a while to get started to get out of the box. But Segura, good break, and he has tremendous speed. Oh, Marwin with a little crow hop there to gather himself, and that was the difference. Might have been better off backhanding and, and just trying to get it and, and let it fly as quickly as possible. So Gallardo this time asked to bunt. Mentioned earlier, Gallardo can hurt you with the bat. Uh, by that I mean he, he he can hit the ball hard, but has laid down four sacrifices and right now charged with trying to put Segura into scoring position. Yeah, and that's why even though it's a bunt situation here, you, you got to be ready for anything because of Segura's speed and the fact that Gallardo can't handle the bat. Situation where you know sometimes you see a manager play a little uh, run and hit. Let the base runner try to steal a base and, and give the pitcher a green light to take a whack if he wants. Up and in and. Good job by Gallardo to get out of the way of that one. That's a strategy a manager will employ especially if he feels like he needs to put some big numbers on the board to win. You know, if, you, if you don't have a lot of confidence in your starting pitcher a lot of times your mindset is why am I playing for a run we, we're going to need four or five to win this game but the way Gallardo's going along uh, you know Renneke willing to play for a run here in this situation although Ed Cedar just had some words of wisdom for Gallardo so they may change things up a little bit well, double play defense up the middle the one one and the bunt is offered out in front of the plate tagged by Snyder the third it though goes through into center field. Great reaction by Chris Snyder to grab it with that bare hand and get the tag out. Very nearly a KG double play. Instead, it ends up being a successful sacrifice. Yeah. Right off a of home plate, and there's the tag made by Snyder, and then alertly throwing to second base, but Segura with that good speed able to get in there, and the throw not handled anyway. Looked like he would have beaten it, even if the throw was on the money. <laughs> Mark Winston, I've got the ball. <laughs> He's, I've got it. Don't you step off that base? <laughs> so now Aoki, who is one for two so far this afternoon, and Lyles now giving a third look to these Brewers hitters. And this is where we talked about it earlier. I mean, it's it's a little above a 450 batting average against third him time third time around. through. Two and oh now to out. And, and a lot of times that's the difference between a successful starting pitcher in the big leagues and a guy that ultimately ultimately moves to the bullpen. The ability to get around that order for the third time and sometimes the fourth time. And you, you either need two 
dominant pitches or a wider assortment of pitches because you can't just give the hitters the same look over and over again unless again unless you, you know. If you're Randy Johnson you could pretty much pitch fastball slider and go through a lineup four times. Most times because he's throwing 98 miles an hour with the. Slider that just eats your lunch. Two one pitch roller up the middle. Handled oh, by Gonzalez no. and he dropped it. And everybody's safe so Segura. Got to third base. And the error now opens up the potential for a very damaging fifth inning against Lyles. And this, by the way, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is this is what plagues Lyles as well, right? It's it's that third yeah, time yeah. through, and there's yeah, usually an somebody, error behind yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a string of starts. There. I remember one in Chicago and against the White Sox, and one in against, Arlington. Yeah, yeah. Just some somebody kind of boots one, throws one away, opens up the door. That's that's the other part of it though. You have to be able to pitch around errors. Marwin usually very reliable. Well, chance now for Lyles in to prove his yeah. medal right here with men on the corners, a tie game. And the two, three, and four hitters coming up for the Brewers. Now he's handled the weeks well so far today with two strikeouts. Runs one in. And they will allow Aoki to take second base. Snyder not gonna get tricked into that one. It's a stolen base for Aoki. And clearly the, the Brewers hoping maybe he would offer to second and that would allow Segura to race in from third base. But that could be a very meaningful 90 feet right there. Weeks more than anything foul. it takes away the double play. That's basically you, you hate to yield that base, but if you're if you're Brad Mills, you consider all the options. What are the, what are my chances of throwing out Aoki? A good base stealer. So do I cover and open up a hole in the infield that maybe Weeks can exploit, even if we don't have a real good chance of throwing him out? One one. And there's that curveball. We've got a speedy guy on third base that if we you know, make a Wobbly throw to second, he might come home. Punch him out, pop him up, and then they'd have the option of pitching around Braun. Good fastball, and Weeks was taken. Are the Astros fully prepared to concede a run here to get an out? Infield back, except it at first base, where Pierce plays about even with a bag. Go off the line. They'll just take the out, and try to avoid the big inning. Two two from Lyles, and the breaking ball bounced to third. Might be a play at the play, and he slides right underneath it. Segura in there, and the Brewers take a two to one lead. Moore, not a bad idea. Looked like he'd had time, but the throw just a little bit too high. And just prior to the pitch, the middle infielders crash, so they're trying to cut this runoff at home. And Moore just tries to make a play, throws a little high. By the time Snyder gets to tag down, the base runner Segura is in safely. It's tough though; you're doing everything all in one motion. Well, fielder's choice and an RBI for Ricky Weeks, and that takes the ability. Or the option of blocking the plate away. Once Snyder has to go airborne to catch that throw, there's no way he can keep Segura off of home plate. If that throw is a little late, but on the money, you know, Snyder could just turn himself into a roadblock there and force Segura to knock him off the plate. First offering to Braun and forgiving call there as it catches the corner. Here we go again. Another one of those situations. Can you limit the damage? National League leader in home runs. The Brewers do not have a home run in this series, which has been one of the stories. Well, Lyles, he really has been snake bitten in this inning. You know, Segura's leadoff hit was a ground ball to short. Aoki reaches on the air on a ground ball to short. A little chopper to third. Good try by Moore, but they don't get their guy. Weak roller short. That'll get home another run. The throw by Gonzalez in time to get Braun, but he'll pick up an RBI on the ground out. Three to one, Milwaukee. 
This may be the most productive inning of ground balls to shortstop in the history of the sport. That's all they've done is hit the ball with this little, little rollers and hoppers to the shortstop, and they managed to put two runs on the board. I guarantee you went through something like this at one point in your career where, you know, you get a ground ball. That's the idea, right? I'm just trying to get a ground ball here. Just get, get an out. But it keeps yeah. working against yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. You just Sometimes, you know, you feel like you're inducing. Here we go. Ground ball short. <laughs> Gonzalez has it perfected this time, and it ends the inning. But two runs score for Milwaukee in the fifth inning, and they jump out in front three to one. The Diamondbacks, as 10,000 fans will receive a Jeff Bagwell Greatest Moments bobblehead. Presented by Champion Energy Services, the bobblehead commemorates Bagwell's 400th home run. Root now and buy tickets at Astros.com. Guys? Hi, thanks, Patty. You're welcome. <laughs> Chris Snyder will lead things off. Then Jordan Lyles, and back to the top of the order. So, two runs in the top of the inning for Milwaukee. An inning in which they did not get a ball out of the infield. One hit, an infield yeah. hit. Well, that's a that's a tough half inning yeah. for Jordan yeah. Lyles. <laughs> and, and all you can do is tell yourself, "Hey, I made good pitches. I did my job." It's not like there were a bunch of errors behind him. Obviously, the one error by Marwin hurt. Some bad breaks. One zero to Snyder. And Ooh. there's that there's that spot for yeah. Gallardo today. It might have been a little beyond the spot. But if you're getting it consistently, then do you try and work it a little further oh, off? Sure, you just keep banging away out there. Well, now he's just getting silly. <laughs> getting greedy, isn't he? Chris Snyder, you know, I tell you, he, he goes up there, he's looking middle in. He's looking fastball middle in, something he can turn on. Bouncer up the middle. Tough play for Segura, and he can't handle it. So Snyder is on. The Astros' fourth hit of the afternoon. Now, no speed there in Snyder. But a base runner right now. Good enough. That breaks a, a long stretch for Gallardo. It retired the previous seven Astros in a row. The first base runner since Jordan Lyles. Two out. Base hit in the second. And a leadoff man aboard. Opportunity now for Lyles to push Schneider along. So the corners will challenge. The middle of the infield pulled in a little. Lyles drops it first base side. Nicely done. Hart's only play is to first base. The week's covering and the sacrifice a good one. We'll see what Tyler Green can do. 
I can't do it any better than that. Important to get a good bunt down when you've got a guy who's not particularly speedy there at first. Hart has no option but to go to Weeks covering. Green's had some good swings this afternoon. The double in the first inning, he flied out in the second. All the Astros do with Green on the ball club is win. Haven't lost since he. Join them as the South one foul. It's either Tyler Green or Art Howell being back Ooh. in the ballpark. Some, one of these two guys is bringing some positive karma. So maybe we'll, the ball club can get Art Howe in one of these throwback Astros unis, put him on the plane. Yeah, take Artie to Chicago. Ball up the middle. Green moves Snyder to third base. With the lack of speed, they won't test Gomez's arm, so the Astros have him on the corners, and Green two for three now this afternoon. Not just like we promised earlier in the game, it's Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Light. There's a double by Tyler Green to start the first. And Marlin sneaks one in there for two bases, and the Astros jumped ahead early. One of the first inning well, held up until just a moment ago, where the Brewers pushed across two runs in the fifth inning to take their first lead. Tyler Green hitting his right on the screws, and then Marlin proving that you don't always have to hit it on the barrel to have success. He got jammed a little bit. Big opportunity here to at least get one home. Green with very good speed at first base. The Astros might try to get him to second and quickly with one out. Not going in the strike call to Gonzalez. Eight steals, two caught with Gallardo on the mound this year. Maldonado has thrown out 17%. In the minor leagues, he caught base dealers at a very high rate. Green with a fairly modest lead at first base. And Gallardo with that move that will yeah, what be a box next year? Be outlawed next year, yes. Do you have a name for that? I got a broadcast partner who calls that the Whirling Dervish. <laughs> the whirling Dervish. That's right. Yeah. No, no, I, I just I've always stuck with the uh, fake the old, third, fake yeah. the third, fake the first, fake the third, back to first. Tasmanian Devil. Better lead this time for Green, but not going. And Gonzalez now on a hole 0 and 2. This is a situation, and a lot of times it's with the pitcher in the box, but a situation where Brad Mills has used the safety squeeze a lot this year, first and third, one out. But uh, with Chris being the base runner down there at third, not a speedy guy, he's going to let Marwin swing. Snyder with the infield hit to start it. Tyler Green with a base hit just a moment ago. Marlon trying to cash in the 0-2. And a high chopper third. Hart thought about it, but now wow. we'll take the out. Oh boy, I can't believe he didn't come home. I'm wondering if he knew who was running. Snyder <laughs> able to score standing up, but it's a 3-2 game. It's as if he momentarily forgot that it was Snyder at third base. Yeah, I know, but the, the play's right in front of him. Comes and gets the ball. Maybe it's just he didn't have the angle because of Gonzalez going up the line and he just didn't feel like he could make a throw. You know, without taking <laughs> taking a step inside. And Chris was anticipating a throw home and he was going to try to get in a rundown to allow the runners to, to move up. Wow. Well, that's a break. And now Green in scoring position at second base. I guarantee you, if you throw that ball right at Marwin's forehead, he's going to get down. <laughs> You know, <laughs> instincts take over. I don't care what's on the line. It could be seventh game of the World Series. You see that ball coming at your coconut, you're getting down. And that's the only thing I can guess is that Hart just with, with Gonzalez coming up the line didn't feel like he had an angle to make that throw, and he probably still had time to take a step to his right and then throw home.
On the one strike pitch to Pierce. And Gallardo now not hitting that that same spot with quite the regularity he was the last two innings. Pierce 0 for 2. He flied out to right. He struck out looking. Trying to get that man home. Very good speed out there in the form of Tyler Green. Pop foul out of play. Maldonado take one of the coconut here. Big swing from Pierce all the way around. Ooh, Ooh, my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Wow. That doesn't seem too bothered by, by it, right? I mean, by it. I'm good. Let's go. The one two and that's all for the Astros in the fifth inning, but they get one of the runs back we go to the sixth in a one run game. Family here, and it's kind of a two part progressive fan here because Lucas is celebrating a birthday. Happy birthday to you. What, what, how old are you? Uh, 12. And you chose to come out here. Why? Because the Astros are the best team in the MLB. There you go. And uh, we've got a little story about your dad, too, because back in 1982, 1983, you were Astro Jack. That's For right. those of us, that was kind of a little before my time. Who was Astro Jack? Uh, Astro Jack was a seven foot orange rabbit. It was Astro Jack and Astro Dillo uh, were the two mascots and we did I guess what mascots do and had a great time doing it. So kind of similar to Junction Jack a little bit different color. Very similar. Looks just like Junction Jack but I was orange but pretty much the same look. You told me that was the best job you ever had. Yeah it was the best job. Yeah they paid me paid me for it which was amazing. I'd have done it for free. And Hart just left the building. Corey Hart who'd been held hitless in this series. It's a solo home run and that's a booming shot to make it four to two Milwaukee. Well, his first two at bats the ball traveled about uh, 100 feet he tried to bunt and then he grounded. Weakly to first base but nothing weak about this one man he went large there. Picked on that fastball from Jordan cleared the hips through the head. And then he went for a nice little jog around the bases he goes up into the conical pump. Now Martin Maldonado. Well that's that's a big fly. Maldonado thinking the same thing. Back to Patty. Well, I'm going to continue uh, finishing up with my progressive fans here uh, but Joe Haas back in the dome days you were uh, Astro Jack and you didn't see quite as many of those along was there. The dome was obviously a, a pitcher's park but what are, what are some of your uh, memories that stand out for you as a mascot back in the 80s. I tell you it was just it was so much fun Patty. It's just the fact that they paid me for a job like that. I'd have done it for free and I used to come and be on the field for batting practice every game and I've got a bunch of really nice memorabilia after all those uh, two years doing that. So 
Awesome. And Luke, uh, I know your big day, uh, your 12th day. What are you going to do tonight to celebrate the rest of your birthday? I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> Mom's cooking you a big dinner, I hear. Yeah. All right. Well, you're our uh, progressive fan of the game, so I'm going to give you guys this great bag to add to your dad's memorabilia. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> All right, guys. All right. Thanks, Patty. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he's looking for his cue card. All right, let's, thank you. Okay, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Happy birthday, young man. Maldonado fouls one right off his instep. One and two the count. That's a good way to spend a birthday. Come to the yard. Get a little gift pack. Get a little airtime. Get a gift pack. Mom's firing up dinner. Kind of a buzzkill. Mom didn't come to the game, right? Yeah, I mean, well, that's what moms do, right? They sacrifice for the greater good. Well, that's true. Just whipping up whatever his favorite is. Molinato pounds one foul again. Stays alive. Did you have that when you were a kid? Did you have the the favorite? Yeah. What was yeah, it? What, uh, what was your go-to you know, dish? No, I, I was a uh, uh, like a chicken and dumplings chicken uh, and guy. Dumplings. Yeah, yeah. At least the chicken part. The dumplings you could have. Well, no, I way. really like the dumplings, but they're very labor intensive, so it's hard to get those every time. Well, Maldonado labors to a, a strikeout, one away in the sixth inning, and that's four now for Jordan Lyles. This is a 93 mile an hour fastball above the hands, and that's that's kind of what you like to see from a pitcher too. After giving up the home run on a fastball to Corey Hart, did not scare him out of the strike zone. Obviously, Maldonado, not the hitter that Corey Hart is, but coming right back, staying on the attack. And you know, we're talking about his velocity early, being uh, earlier in the game, being up uh, this year significantly over last year. It's a couple of miles an hour on average, which is significant. You know, go from 90 to 92, and that's average velocity. And uh, I think it was in a start in Milwaukee. I, I, I believe we got one, and I don't know if their gun is juiced up over there. At 96, I mean, that's, I mean, he, I'm pretty sure he touched 96. And, but we've seen a number of 94, a lot of 93. Good tailing wind, I think, that day. Yeah, Going I don't know. What downhill, day. maybe. Although there are, I mean, let's face it, there are guns that are hotter than others. You know, ballparks yeah. we go to where you know, guys yeah. can't seem to get over 88 miles per hour, no matter who they are. I think it might be a little jacked up there in Milwaukee. The one-one, and a broken bat roller to third base. So Moore takes care of business. Pierce helping him out over there at first base, bringing that one down two away. Maybe the hot gun seems to follow Araldis Chapman around yeah. the National League everywhere he goes. Shuffle, shuffle, and then Pierce has to elevate a little bit. Now two gone in the eighth place hitter now, Gene Segura. Yes, he did. I think so. Not only did he swing, moved his feet a little bit. That's a good productive pitch right yeah, there. That is. That is. That's a win-win. You get the strike and you knock him on his backside. Segura two for two and can't handle that curveball. So maybe maybe Lyles felt like it was it was time for him to become just a little less comfortable up there. He has set up quite a bit of this Brewers afternoon. It was the base hit that set up the run in the second inning. His infield hit that started that bizarre fifth inning against Lyles. And now the 0-2 and he got him to go. Another strikeout for Lyles, his fifth of the day. But the home run by Corey Hart adds to the Brewers' lead. Astros have some coming back to do.
Those hit the road off to Wrigley Field and Armando Galarraga will get his fourth start as an Astro. Jeff Samarja will take the ball for the Chicago Cubs and they are reeling. You know, Astros have endured a, a very difficult month and a half, two months. But right now the, the Cubs are in a free fall for the better part of two weeks now. And Samarja will try to get them out of it. One just once in their last ten games. So. Trailing the Reds two to nothing at Wrigley this afternoon. Well, first pitch swing and Maxwell puts it on the ground to short, and Segura takes care of him for out number one. The Cubs proving to be a tonic for Cincinnati. The Reds had lost five in a row before heading into Chicago, and with a win today, they will have swept that weekend series from the Cubbies. Phillies and Cardinals are knotted up at four. They've played six. Pirates ended up putting a nine spot on San Diego in that fourth inning. Now lead the Padres ten to five. That's, well, that's a lot of offense. TNC Park this afternoon. That would be Clint Barmas grand slam, part of that nine-run fourth inning. One out. Scott Moore, who's 0 for one, and he takes a strike. Meanwhile, the the Nationals are in Arizona later on today. The Nationals are streaking. They brought their green hat on this road trip. Eight in a row for them, and they're dealing with a, a Diamondbacks team that is battling and trying to stay in that race out west. Nationals road trip will continue after that. I think they go to San Francisco, so it's a long roadie for them, but all success so far. Our Fox Tracks today is brought to you by Text Dot. Drink, drive, go to jail. Two one to Scott Moore and that's the spot in the Fox tracks that Gallardo has managed to yeah, right hit there. all day yeah, right down there in the. The Charlie Weaver square. <laughs> For the block. Here's a two two. And Moore goes down swinging that is seven strikeouts now. For Gallardo. He's one of those guys when he gets on a roll, he's fun to watch pitch because he can really execute a game plan the way he uses both the breaking ball and his fastball and, and locates the heater. That time he elevates to get more. Shake it out a little bit. Realign those bone chips and get after it. <laughs> well, that pitch count may become an issue. Francisco bounds that one straight back. I mean, at 90 pitches now, you can. See where another inning, certainly two innings within range. You don't know that. He'll be leading off the seventh inning for Milwaukee. That's never the issue, though. So he misses outside. His bat is never one that they're terribly concerned about covering up with a pinch hitter. I mean, he can swing it. Yeah, if I'm if I'm Ron Renicky, I'm going to get every last pitch I can get out of Gallardo here today. The way his bullpen is scuffled. And right now this a two run game and. I would bet if you ask the the Astros bench right now they'd feel like. This is still there still very much. Within reach if they can get Gallardo out of the game. Well yeah well two factors one the, the fact that the Brewers bullpen has been as bad as it has and, and, and that the Astros have finally won some you know games late the way they did in the last two days and you know that's not going to turn your season around. But at least you feel like hey, all right we can, we're capable. Well, there's a free base runner second walk issue today by Gallardo. And we get Fernando Martinez to the plate. The Astros. On Friday night scored two runs in the bottom of the ninth inning for their first walk off win. Of the season. Amazing their 114th game of the year and they finally got their first walk off win. Follow that up last night. With. A run in the bottom of the 10th inning for their first extra innings victory of the year. So two dramatic wins in this series. As Martinez yeah. takes a strike and they would. Uh, of course that goes without saying I mean they'd love to. Complete the. The trifecta with. Something miraculous again today. Get a sweep out of this thing. And they want to win it in the bottom of the ninth too. It's more fun that way. Hard bouncer second easy play for Ricky Weeks and the Astros put away again in the sixth inning. We go to the seventh. It's still 4 2 Milwaukee.
safe and affordable, it's probably a Hyundai. By AT&T, rethink possible. And by Cushada Casino Resort, the largest, most exciting casino resort in Louisiana. Earlier in the game, you guys were debating what is the color. Well, it's supposed to be midnight blue. Ooh. But we've had so many people debating it because parts of it look midnight blue and parts of it look black on these uniforms. I think it all depends on the lighting. That kind of looks midnight blue from the right lighting, but the number on the back definitely looks black. It's kind of like the Yankees, isn't it? Uh, sometimes, depending on the lighting, the Yankees look blue, and they're, other times they look black. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's a, a good comparison, Greg. I heard somebody said deep space blue, Ooh. which I like that. You know, they sticking with the whole space city theme. I'm just thinking Melissa Manchester after Greg referenced Midnight Blue. <laughs> Gallardo takes a big rip. It's now one and two as he leads off the seventh inning. Gallardo with the RBI single in the second inning. That was a that was a big play. Both pitchers today have swung the bat well. And a little bouncer shortstop Marwin Gonzalez handles it cleanly and that is out number one. Yeah, you know people are gonna they're gonna they're gonna think, come on, man, you're just being a shill for the company promoting this Lyles kid the way you are with that 5.69 ERA. But I, I like this kid. I think he's got a really bright future. Well, and again, when you, you you look at the numbers so far this afternoon, he's given up four runs. But those two runs in the fifth inning. Uh, and we said it at the time, pointed out since, and it, the Brewers did not get the ball out of the infield. An error hurt him. A, a split second decision at, at first base on a, on a throw from Marwin Gonzalez. It hurt him on an infield hit. Post play at the plate that didn't go his way. Zaoki takes one high and out, ball one. This is this fun baseball to watch when you've got two pitchers. Pitching well, both guys capable of helping themselves with the with the bat, kind of old school National League baseball. It's a good changeup. I haven't seen many of those. It's a nice wrinkle to break out when you're seeing a hitter for the third time, fourth time. Yeah, this is the fourth time too now for Lyles, and not only a good change of pace on that one is a little bouncer towards short, tougher play. Gonzalez, good bare hand, but not in time. Aoki, too quick, and that. High chopper cost Jordan Lyles in the seventh inning. This is a, I'm going to say about the fourth infield hit to shortstop in this series for the Brewers. I could go back and look through my scorebook to verify it, but I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just going to tell you that they've done this a number of times, and this time Marwin makes a very nice play. But Aoki, the way he hits off that front foot, I mean, he's, he's got a step or two out of the box as he's making contact. Indeed, it is the fourth infield hit to short in this series. There's one to third, one to second as well. <laughs> you've got well nicely done. Oh, yeah. You're like Brownie. I just throw it out there, and you've got the confirmation. Pitch to Weeks misses outside. Yeah, well, I mean, I just look back at the last two days, and you know, yeah. it's right there. They, you, but the fact that you you guessed right. No, I, mean, I just uh, turning the page is, is is a real effort for me. Yeah. It's a day of rest. The 1 0 runner going. Pitches a ball in the throw. Not quite in time. Aoki with his second stolen base. Well, for a moment there, it looked like that throw might just get him. And I'm not so sure that, that it wouldn't have gotten him had the ball maybe been allowed to go through to the base. And, and you see that sometimes. Tyler Green caught that ball in front of second base to sweep the tag back. If you. Take the glove back just a little bit and catch the ball on the tag. Sometimes you'll get the man. Yeah, very, very close. A little short hop. Catch and tag there by Green. So now Aoki in scoring position. 2-0 to Weeks and he'll take it low. You know, Brad Mills tells the story of the biggest stolen base in uh, the history of the Red Sox franchise probably. Dave Roberts mm -hmm. steals second base. And, and when everybody on the planet knew he was going to be running against the Yankees in that ALCS. And he says that it was Jeter catching the ball too far out in front of second base. Had he allowed the ball to go through, Roberts probably out. Let the ball travel. 
pop up behind the plate for Snyder, and that one hit the rafters. So that's a dead ball. It hits the rafter in foul territory. And JD, how many of those in this series? It's been at least a couple, right? That's two or three. It's our yeah. third, yeah. But it's it's a dead ball when it hits those rafters in foul ground. If it hits one of those in fair territory, then it's where the ball lands that determines whether or not it's yeah. a foul or a fair ball. And to me, I, if, if the guy can handle the, can make the catch after the carom, it should be an out no matter what. I mean, that's that's a hard play. You should get rewarded for that. 101 pitches for Jordan Lyle now. Jordan and rock solid this afternoon. Now in full count on weeks. Meanwhile, Mickey Story has started to throw in the bullpen. Started. Who knows? Looks like he's pretty well done. He's ready. <laughs> Taking his time. Weeks 0 for 3, but did bring a run home in the fifth inning. With his bouncer to third base. Now yeah, pitch. And that one skied to right field. Easy play for Francisco. Aoki tags. He is going to try and advance. He will. And that's the second time today that the Brewers have gone second to third on a fly ball to right field. Yeah, ben kind of catching this one flat footed. As opposed to getting behind the ball and having a little momentum coming in to set up the throw. He doesn't have a particularly strong arm anyway. Not a, not a huge advantage there by getting to third base, but it does put a little extra pressure on Snyder now when he asks for that breaking ball to make sure he blocks it. You want to give up a cheap run here, and you've got bigger concerns with Ryan Braun stepping into the batter's box. No kidding. Let me correct myself, by the way. Both teams have advanced second to third on a fly ball to right. As Lyles finds that outside corner for a strike to Braun. This little get over breaking ball. To get the jump on a dangerous hitter. One for three today. And that bouncer up the middle could be trouble. Gonzalez gets there. Good throw. And Braun retired. So the Brewers leave a man at third base. They still have the four to two lead. As the folks here at Minute Maid Park stand and stretch. And we'll let you enjoy God Bless America this afternoon. Pleased and honored to welcome to this afternoon's game service members who have recently returned home from overseas deployment. Welcome home, gentlemen. And now, ladies and gentlemen, to honor them and all of the servicemen and women who protect our freedom around the world every day. Please join former World War II veteran and soon to be 94 years old, Mr. Joe Prince, for the singing of God Bless America. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, wide with foam, God bless America, my home. Sweet home, God bless America, my home, sweet home.
present Chevy Hometown Kids. It's not about the score, it's about the experience. So tune in each Saturday at 10 a.m. right here on Fox Sports Houston or visit hometownkids.tv for night, more information. Big and bright. All right, thanks, Patty. The Astros sending Chris Snyder in the spot of the seventh inning, and Brett Wallace has grabbed a bat, stepped into that on deck circle for Jordan Lyles. Well, a two run game. And looking more and more like the bullpens are going to be a factor in this ballgame today. We I mean, didn't know early on if maybe Gallardo would go the distance. His Snyder lines one to center field, and that's a big base hit this afternoon. Gallardo creeping up on 100 pitches for the day, and the Astros get the lead man on. Snyder with a base hit last time. This time he drives a line drive into center field. It was a leadoff single by Snyder in the fifth that got things started. He came around to score. Now Brett Wallace will hit for Lyles. A chance to tie this ball game with one swing of the bat and another very good start for Jordan Lyles today. Yeah, Jordan certainly acquitted himself well today, all things considered. He to work around some misplays behind him. But seven innings, four runs on eight hits, only two of the runs earned. No walks and five strikeouts. Yeah, he's got to feel awfully good about that effort here this afternoon. So Wallace in there and takes ball one from Gallardo. Now, Wallace, you know, he's done a nice job overall this year at the plate, but in particular, hitting better than 350 against right handers, which you suspect would be his strength. And four out of 12 against this right hander. Out to between first and second. Nice shot by Hart to get that ball, and they will get the lead man, Snyder, erased on the fielder's choice. It was almost as if Corey Hart made up his mind because he didn't throw Snyder out at home plate back in the fifth. He was going to do everything he had, could to throw out Snyder. I mean, he, he comes flying off this bag, belly flop. Takes a while to get the ball out of his glove, but had plenty of time. Snyder going to make sure there's no turn. That was a big play in this game when Corey Hart opted not to go home when Snyder was coming from third base on a ground ball to first, a play in which looked like Hart had an easy play on him. Well, Tyler Green. He's had a good day today against Gallardo. Two for three, a double, a single. He's also flied out to left field. Represents the potential tying run in the seventh inning. One and one the count now. So Gallardo over 100 pitches. Not that that is any sort of magic number. It's about the time, though, you start paying close attention to. A guy and you know how far he can go. He's certainly gone deeper than that this year. Well, 117, the most pitches he's made in a start this year. It was back on July 1st against Arizona. And the, the modern game managers really restricted by the pitch count for fear if you stretch a guy out to 130 pitches or so, everybody's going to be up in arms. The agent, the front office. The media, maybe even the player himself. Hey, you're abusing me, man. And Gallardo misses now. It's two and two to Green. Of course, Gallardo, I mean, he is not just the workhorse of this team. He's the only pitcher in the history of their franchise who has managed to go 200 plus innings three consecutive years. And yet, you know, you look at the pitch counts this year, pretty rare that he goes over. Yeah, 110. It's, it's, it's the norm now. You know, most guys, most managers get pitchers out of there. And a lot of times the game situation will dictate that anyway. You need to pinch hit in the late innings, whether you're trying to come from behind or add to a lead. It's Green swinging for his eighth strikeout of the afternoon. And now, if the Astros are going to get anything out of this inning, it's going to be up to Marlon Gonzalez. And a lot of times managers will tell you it's not just the pitch count, but you know, has has my guy had to work out of two or three jams? Has he had a couple really long innings? And that really hasn't been the case for Gallardo. He worked hard there in the first. 
But he's had a number of very easy innings since then. Hasn't been under a lot of duress. Gonzalez has driven in both Astros runs today. That one going to be trouble for McDonald. Wallace not with great speed. And he's gunned down. Wow. Well, that's too bad. I don't think he got tagged. Wallace is arguing, where, where did he tag me? Well, it's the girls running off the field. <laughs> Get out of Dodge before anybody changes their mind. Thrown out, 2-6, inning over. Still a two-run game. And today, all about Jordan Lyles. Yeah, that, that right hand at the end of that right arm was really good today. And the good curveball working early on. We talked about his problems this year, working his way through the order the third time. But that did not really manifest itself here this afternoon. He gave up that home run to Corey Hart in the sixth, but the two runs that scored off of him in the fifth were unearned. Three, four infield hits. Uh, putting back to back. Solid starts together now. Jordan Lyles headed in the right direction. Well, Mickey Story takes over for him now in the eighth. And Mickey Story, a, a big piece of it last night for the Astros as he came in and worked an inning in a third. He struck out Carlos Gomez with the bases loaded to get out of a jam. And then in the very next inning, he got uh, Braun Hart and Ramirez. So he works through the toughest part of the Brewers' batting order. And the Astros. Came back to win that ball game five times he's been out there and you see the numbers for the right hander story he's not a real hard thrower he gets pretty good movement on his two seam fastball slider perhaps his best pitch. He did a great job at Oklahoma City this year and very deserving call up. That Astros bullpen. Very beleaguered in July and early August and was called up August 3rd and. Yeah, you know, they've been a, a number of arms down in Oklahoma City that uh, would get more attention than Story. Power arms, guys that really throw hard, but most of those guys weren't pitching very well. And Story was. He was putting up very good numbers. Started Ramirez with a changeup. Aramis Ramirez 0 for 3 so far today. And pounds one on the ground is short. Marlon Gonzalez has been busy today. Good throw to first base, and that is out number one. Yeah, Lyles, man, he got a lot of outs on the ground. I'm just looking at my scorecard here, and I see a fly ball by Weeks last inning to right field. Everything else was on the ground or a punch out. Yep. 15 ground ball outs. Man. <laughs> you really don't think of him as an extreme ground ball pitcher. And certainly more so this year than last, but wow, that's, a, that's like Big Daddy Rick Russell kind of stuff. <laughs> well, he'll take it. The guy next to him right there does a good job with ground ball outs too. Dallas Keuchel. Now Corey Hart 
jumps ahead 2 and 0 oh here. He hit a bomb in the sixth inning. We've got the measurement at about 408 feet. It was at least that. Made it a 4 2 Brewers lead. Good slider there. Story didn't want to give in on 2 0. Oh. Astros have the shift down for Hart. Something they've been doing this year, sliding the second baseman over on the uh, shortstop side of the bag. First baseman Pierce way off the line. Yeah, a little different. I mean, the Astros have gone with that all year with Corey Hart. You remember that first series of the year when they did that? Hart went five for nine, a couple of home runs, and the shift seemed irrelevant. But uh, since then, Hart has been calmed down a little bit, and, and the shift really more or less hasn't been a huge factor. Now a full count on Corey Hart, but it's unusual to see that kind of a shift on a right-handed hitter it, up it, until it, recent years. Yeah, it used to be nobody would do it. They would shift on left-handed pull hitters, but for whatever reason they wouldn't shift on righties. And I guess it was because of the oddity of the first baseman having to come so far off the bag to cover the hole. But if you got a guy who's athletic enough to be able to run over and cover first, then why not do it? All your spray charts show you that the guy hardly ever hits the ball on the ground to the right side. It's well worth it. And that's really one of the, the, the changes in the game the last couple of years. Uh, teams are being much more creative with their defensive positioning. And the whole thing started, the craze really started back in the mid 40s with Ted Williams. And uh, Ubu Drow with the Indians, he would. He would put everybody but the left fielder. I mean, the left fielder was the only man left on the left side of the field. Everybody else would be on the right when Williams would come up. Bouncer down that third baseline. That's trouble. Extra bases for Maldonado. Into third base Hart. They're going to send him. And the relay man missed. Hart will score without a throw. And Maldonado hung out now between second and third. Running him back toward third base and putting the tag on him for the final out. Or rather the, the second out of the inning is... Green, but that's frustrating because the throw coming back into the infield. Had they hit Marlon Gonzalez, you probably have a shot anyway. That's something happening at home plate. Well, yeah, and it, 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 hurt, it hurt, took a little steam out of it too, and it hit the towel, and that might have been a little bit of a difference maker. Only seven, five, four put out eventually. It's Maldonado. I, I can't help but wonder though, had, had Martinez hit Marwin Gonzalez, if maybe he would have had a throw to the plate. Gomez tried to hold up there. Apparently did. Ball one. So 5 2 Milwaukee on that double by Martin Maldonado. Gomez one for three today. And Takes a breaking ball, low and in. That was the first the, uh, walk to Hartwood's the first walk issued by the Astros this afternoon, and it comes around to bite them. Well, that makes the, the comeback portion of this game a lot more difficult. As Gomez comes up empty there, one and two. A two run game, of course, all you need is you know, a base runner, and then anything's possible. The Astros now. Which is six outs remaining. They're going to have to come up with a, a big inning. Sustain maybe a, a little bit of a rally. And the old bloop and a blast won't get it done. I mean, a couple bloops and a blast. Or a plunk of bloop and a blast. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose there are variations a blast and a blast and a blast, whatever the case, but they got their work cut out. Stories. 2-2 two, two to Gomez. And we'll stay alive. Now the question today is, you know, who are those guys going to be at the, you know, in these bullpens for these two teams? Wilton Lopez not available today. Jim Henderson, who was more or less uh, donned the, the closer yesterday, not available. There you see Jose Veras warming up for Milwaukee. Went off the end of the bat foul. Yeah, I would think Varus eighth and then back to Axford in the ninth would be the strategy for Ron Renneke this afternoon. Well, in which case, three runs. And, and I'm not trying to be facetious here. Then, you know, three runs. Not exactly a, a comfort level for those guys down there in that 
Brewers dugout. I mean, five runs maybe. But they they have seen some very wild and disappointing finishes from their bullpen. Oh, it's been ugly. Swing and a miss by Gomez, and that's a strikeout for Story. So the inning done, but that walk really hurt him. 5-2 Milwaukee. TV today to take advantage of new low pricing and see every remaining Astros out of market game live online and on your favorite devices in HD quality. Visit Astros.com to order and get more details. MLB.TV. Baseball is everywhere. Dave? It is indeed. He's been all over the place today. Look at that guy. He's got his baseball shirt on. It says baseball. And on the shirt. Got a little Opie Taylor going on, doesn't he? Yes, he does. He's got a lot of faith that the Astros could get it done against uh, this Milwaukee Brewers bullpen if Gallardo will give way. His first pitch to Gonzalez bounced up the middle. That's a base hit. And Gallardo now at 107 pitches. And you, you wonder how much rope Ron Renneke will give him in this inning. Not, not so much because he's concerned about Gallardo and his ability to get out. But if, if he lets Gallardo create a, a tough spot for his bullpen. Right, aren't, aren't you putting your bullpen well, in it? And that, 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 that's the rub, right? Who do you trust more? Right now he trusts Gallardo more than he trusts his bullpen. But he doesn't want to hand that baton over to the bullpen in such a precarious situation for guys that are struggling to begin with. That's, that's, the, that's the debate that's going on in the Brewer dugout right now. Steve Pierce. 0 for 3 today against Gallardo. But gets a good swing. That's a base hit left field. Around second, Gonzalez to the left to hold. Braun playing very deep in left. And as a result, able to cut that thing off quicker. But again, now that that question only gets more and more difficult here for Renneke. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah you trust him more, but you, you can't let him put his bullpen in a, in a tougher spot. Right. And that's and, and, and a lot of it too. Now Rick Cranitz, the pitching coach, is going to go out and chat with Gallardo. And the other thing that you have to do is you talk about the pitch count and who you have confidence in and, and all those other things. But you also have to watch your starting pitcher and just see how he's throwing the ball. And if you get the sense that he's losing it, then you probably got to be ready to make that move to the bullpen, even though those guys are struggling. Now, if Gallardo had given up a couple of scratch hits, but you know, it was a 92 mile hour fastball in the corner and somebody reached down, poked a good breaking ball. He would say, hey, my guy's still throwing the ball good. I trust him. He's, he's my ace. But yeah. both those pitches that were hit were hit hard and they weren't located well at all. So that, that sends up a little bit of a red flag. We mentioned earlier. 117, the most pitches Gallardo has been allowed to throw in one game this year. Gallardo. Well, the furthest he's gone in the game in terms of outs, seven 
and a third. He's not quite there yet today. Two men on for Justin Maxwell. He'll take a big swing. Bounce that one up the middle. Weeks behind his back. Nice play. And they turn the double play. Wow. Little mustard on that hot dog for Ricky Weeks. Fancy, fancy stuff by Weeks. And it all starts with a good decision by Giovanni Gallardo to leave the ball alone. Watch. He starts to go after. He says, you know what? I got a guy out there gets paid a lot to make plays for me. And then Ricky Weeks goes into curly kneel mode. A little sweet Georgia Brown music to this one as they go 4-6-3. And boy, does that hurt the Astros. Off the bat, looked like maybe a base hit up the middle. Turns into two outs. Pretty slick stuff. Indeed. Now Scott Moore. And Gallardo had 111 pitches. And the mood just lightened significantly in the Brewer dugout. They were like, oh, here we go again. We have to rely on this pen to close out a one run game if the Astros get something going against Gallardo. One and one now to more. Certainly a deflating feeling on the Astros side is you know after winning back to back games the way they did they're, they're I'm sure their sense was oh here we go again boys. Right there for us. You know we talked in the in the pregame open today or the pregame show. Bart Ennis and, and Art Howe about how win or lose you still come out to the ballpark and I think your line was big league players make big league plays and you see some spectacular yeah. stuff and we just yeah. saw some. Yeah. It is amazing. It doesn't seem to matter what day it is or who the teams are. You will more than likely see something pretty cool when you come out to the ballpark. Too bad that didn't work out well for the Astros. Yeah. Well that's but it's. it's there's a hard bouncer there up go. the middle that gets the run home. So Gonzalez steps on the plate. And that more RBI single might just be enough for Ron Renneke. Boy, he is pacing down there and talking things over with his bench staff. Good job by Moore here just staying on this ball and going right up the middle with it. Yeah, it looks like Renneke's going to make the move. Uh, that double play really limited the number of outs his bullpen has to get here this afternoon. He's going to make the move now while it, there's a little wiggle room. It's you know it's still a two-run game, one man on base. Well, Gallardo just about got him there. Maybe better said Ricky Weeks almost got them there. But but now that bloop and a blast, two-run game. New pitcher coming up. Matt Ryan and the Falcons. Then on Friday, August 17th, Matt Stafford and the Lions head to Baltimore to square off against Ray Lewis and the Ravens. Coverage of both games begins at 7 p.m. Central, only on Fox. The changes out there for the Brewers, guys. Now, Jose Veras coming on here for Milwaukee. 
A uh, big uh, hard throwing right hander. Is the first man out of the shoot for Ron Renicky this afternoon. He's working in his 51st ball game. He's three and four with a 470. Take note of the walks. 30 of those in 46 innings. He'd be a little uh, wobbly with the command. Fastball, curveball, split finger pitch, and it's probably why you don't see a left-handed pinch hitter here. Brian Bogusevic available on the bench for the Astros, but Vera's pretty tough on lefties with that splitter. So Mills is going to stick with Ben Francisco here. Francisco one for five in his career against Veras. Today, all for two with a walk. Astros have more at first base. A run already in in the inning. And of course, the good news is they've chased Gallardo from this game. Gallardo's longest game in terms of outs recorded with seven and two thirds today through 114 pitches. But clearly, a little out of gas in this eighth inning. Ooh, Francisco chasing one. You know, were not for that spectacular double play. Yeah, uh, this is a whole lot different situation. But the Astros very much alive in this thing. Oh, two to Francisco. And you pointed out the walks. I mean, patience may well be a virtue when facing Varys today. And the other thing, you know, he throws uh, his fastball mostly two seamers, and they have a tendency to run back. In on right handed hitters now he hit the outside corner with that first one but th that's what you're hoping for here with Francisco we've shown that he's pulled off some pitches today but if they make a mistake middle in on him that's where he can really do some damage. Try to hit that outside corner with a two seamer if it runs back over the heart of the plate. He stays slider. And Francisco strikes out to win the Astros threat in the eighth inning but they get a run back it's a two run game as we head to the ninth. Stylish, intelligent, safe, and affordable. It's probably a Hyundai. Our game moves to the ninth. Brewers lead it five to three. Let's go back upstairs. Dave Raymond and Jim Deshaies. Yeah, well, a, a close enough game, I would suggest, JD. This game very much undecided with just one inning to play, but these bullpens have made things interesting. The, not just in this series, but all year long. As Mickey Story stays in the game and will. Started off against Gene Segura. Yeah, post to zero here, and you've got a fighting chance in the bottom half of the ninth. Segura lifts one high in the air center. That's going to be a long run. Maxwell, who is shallow, but he'll track it down. And the one thing about Justin Maxwell, we, we, we love his power. He's been a lot of fun to watch at the plate. 
But you don't lose anything defensively with him out there either. Well, he had a nice break on this one. You look where he starts and where this ball ends up. Good read, good break. And a nice way to start this inning. And Segura showing some pretty good pop to a big part of the yard. So now Travis Ishikawa will bat here for Barris. Left handed hitter, former giant. So Barris faces just the one hitter. Again, opens up that. A great question. Who will it be in the ninth? A big lanky righty throwing. I don't know if it's oh. Henderson or Cameron Lowe. Cameron Lowe, yeah. Story puts one right on the outside corner for a strike to Ishikawa. Mickey bounces one up there. One and one. Ishikawa, there was a point where, and the Giants went through a, a stretch where they were kind of searching, trying to figure out how to survive post Barry Bonds. And Ishikawa, one of those guys that was run in and out for a while, takes a good rip here. Maxwell will get another chance. This one a whole lot easier, two away. Ishikawa never really did pan out. You know, just kind of an extra man for the Brewers. Two gone, and it'll be Narichka Aoki again. Aoki's been a bit of a pest on three times today. A couple of base hits, reached on an error. He's stolen two bases, scored a run. And was on a couple times yesterday, too. Batting average up to 291 now. Showing bunt. Take strike one from Mickey Story. Normally, I'm not a big fan of the two out bunt for a base hit, but when you've got a guy who can steal a base, it makes more sense. Objective now, two outs in the inning, nobody on, is to get into scoring position. So he may feel bunt single stolen base is a more likely scenario for him than hitting one in the gap or over the outfielder's heads. I didn't notice if Scott Moore was in initially. He is now at third base. And with each moment, creeps back at another six, eight inches or so. He's about even with a bag now. Respectful, but not worried about it. And the story pumps it right in there, strike two. Now J.D. in the bottom of the ninth inning, Astros have the bottom three spots coming up. Fernando Martinez, Chris Snyder, and then the pitcher's spot. But they also have on the bench Jose Altuve, Brandon Barnes, Brian Bogus Savick. Should they want them? A breaking ball. Tap back to the mound. Nice job by Story. Easy underhand to first. And a perfect ninth for him. We'll see if the Astros can summon some more magic here today, this afternoon. The playoff push gets into full swing. 
when the Red Sox head to the Bronx to take on the AL East leading Yankees in a showdown between bitter division rivals or the surprising Pirates battle the Cardinals in St. Louis. Fox Saturday baseball telecast presented by Budweiser returns August 18th at 2.30 p.m. Central. This is Patty's assistant. Dave, back to you. <laughs> well, Brownie, Who's just that man time. behind the curtain? We must be getting ready to go to Chicago. You just never know what you're going to get here. How do they speak? <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Brownie, a busy man, doing double duty today. Ah, raising money for charity. And uh, oh, he's out there. Brownie break. Yeah, he's got yeah. the Hawaiian shirt on. And he's got the whole deal going. Yeah, out there doing nice things for other people. Yeah, what's he thinking? He's pr he probably got his feet in a hot tub or something right now, too. <laughs> <laughs> nice and relaxed. That's good. Well deserved day off for Brownie. All right, here we go. Last of the ninth inning, and Fernando Martinez to start things off against Big Cameron Lowe, six foot eight right hander. There's uh, one lefty in the uh, Brewer bullpen, Manny Parra. He worked last night. He's he struggled, so I'm not sure if this is a situation where Ron Renicky is now going to say, "Well, let's let's pass that baton to Lowe and see if he can be our closer." Nobody's throwing behind him, so it looks like he's going to get the opportunity to finish the ninth inning. Hard smash by third base hit. And so Fernando Martinez gets the ninth inning started about the way you might expect against these Milwaukee Brewers. And Lowe really relies on a sinker, and you would think that would play well against lefties. It has in the past, but when you elevate it, you're asking for trouble, and that's exactly what happened there. Fastball was up, and a nice job by Martinez. Just Hitting it hard the other way. 50 times now, Lowe has trotted out of the Brewer bullpen. He's 4 and 4 with a 3.86 ERA. Unlike uh, Varus, he has shown good command. He's walked just 14 in 49 innings. And Snyder's had a nice day with a couple of knocks. Double play depth on the infield in the first pitch. Right in there for a strike. Now, and we mentioned it. Milwaukee has had a tough time of it out of their bullpen, and that is certainly understating it. They have been atrocious, historically bad, and it doesn't seem to matter who it is. Snyder takes it in the dirt. I mean, they have 28 relief losses, most in Major League Baseball. They have blown 22 saves. Again, well clear of anybody else in Major League Baseball. They've only converted 52% of their save opportunities this year. 24 of the 46 opportunities. 1-1. One, one. Bouncer foul. Low. Got away with one there. He started Snyder with a fastball over the heart of the plate for strike one. And, and again, you know, Snyder's a guy who looks middle in, and that two seamer from low, that's going to run in that direction. So these are dangerous offerings to Chris Snyder. When you've got the ball moving into the big fella, that's where he does his best work. Snyder does have very good power. He could run into one, and should he, then we would have a new game. Astros walked off in the bottom of the ninth on Friday. Won an extras last night in the one two. And that'll get Snyder. One out now in the ninth. Yeah, good. Hard sinker here from low. This time there's no movement back to the inside part of the plate. Just stays over that outside corner with very good depth. And this is probably fortunate he didn't hit that one. That might have been a double play if he put that in play. Here comes Cranny again. Rick Kranitz, pitching coach for the Brewers, and he's going to want to talk over Brian Bogusevic. So Mickey Story went two innings today in relief of Jordan Lyles, and that gives way to Bogusevic. Now, the Astros, the one thing they have done consistently well all year, JD, is, is pinch hit. I mean, this is. Yes, this is their real strength. Yeah, they have very and, good pinch hitting numbers. And this guy, Brian Bogusevic, maybe the best of them, seven for twenty so far this year. So 
left-handed hitter against his hard-throwing right-hander Cameron Lowe. Breaking ball and it's right in there for a strike. Astros hitting 250 in the pinch this year. A slow curve ball for strike one. Major League average is 225. They've hit four pinch home runs. Tying run at the plate. Bottom of the ninth inning. And low misses downstairs. The last Astros sweep was here, Minute Maid Park, in May, late May against. The Chicago Cubs, and that will be the Astros' next opponent. They're off to Chicago after this ball game. Three-game sweep here at Minute Maid. One-one, and Bogey taps one weakly in front of the mound. Low will try to make the play and bounce it to first. It's late. Oh, oh doctor! So Bogusevic is on. Martinez in scoring position. The potential winning run comes up. <laughs> Uncanny. How about that? It's going to be an E1 on Cameron Lowe. And a good call by the umpire. Very difficult to anticipate this kind of a play if you're an umpire. And Lowe just he decides to kill the clock here. You get one more shot at the end zone. <laughs> I mean, <he's laughs> that's Larry Anderson like. Tough, tough call. Boy, close. And the umpire really, I don't know if he has a real good look as to when this ball gets. To Corey Hart, that could have easily well, that, gone the other way. Yeah, that, 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 that's really close, and I think yeah. part of it was it's not a, a real clean grab at first. Right. Well, Tyler Green, he has been the good luck charm for this team, and it did appropriate that he's up now as he takes ball one from Cameron Lowe. If I'm the umpire in that situation, I rule against the guy who bounced the ball in the dirt. Don't nice put me in that position to have to make that bang bang call. Green two for four today is scored a run. Very deep in the outfield for the Brewers, playing no doubles. One and one to count now. They're not as concerned with that man on second base as they are with Bogusevic on first. He represents the tying run. Cameron Lowe with that good sinker. You got to get him up. You got to elevate. Get him to get that ball up a little bit. And Tyler Green has really been impressive his first couple of starts for the Astros. Gonna keep this storybook beginning going. 1-1 one, one to Green. And he'll lay off. Ball two. Yeah, I mentioned that 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 sweep of the Cubs. Back in May, Juan Rodriguez won that that final game. Brett Myers, Brandon Lyon, worked, worked right. two scoreless innings. Those guys. Carlos Lee, Chris Johnson combined to score four of the Astros five runs that day. Did Jay Happ pinch run or anything? <laughs> Didn't get him in there. Suffice to say, it was a different team. Here's the two-one. Ooh, there was the pitch. And now it's all square. Two and two to green. Yeah, you got to be careful in these situations. You know, there's a lot of adrenaline. You want to do something big and you know, tendency to overswing. You know, just keep the line moving. Have a good at bat. Try to hit a line drive somewhere. Astro's got a run in the eighth today. Trying another improbable comeback. It's this Brewers much maligned bullpen low ready in his 2 2 and that will take care of green couldn't commit maybe worse couldn't stop himself and now two gone the Astros down to their final out a little guy who you know, has had good years uh, I don't know that he's ever had a chance to close before but the one thing you have to like about him is you know you don't walk people, and with that sinker, you keep the ball in the ballpark. You're tough to beat. You force clubs to string some hits together against you to beat you. Two big league saves in his career. Doesn't make him close. It doesn't mean that he was even closing those games. It mean that he was credited with a save on two different occasions. Well, Marwin Gonzalez, he's been the man. He's driven in. Two of the Astros three runs he scored the other and that one bounces up will take away any force as both runners advance on the wild pitch. And now the Brewer outfield will return to their normal depth. 
because the single likely ties the ball game. Maldonado able to knock it down but not contain it. And everybody moves up 90 feet. Braun still quite deep in left field. That's just naturally where he plays. But boy, if Marlon could dump a little single into left, we've got a tie ball game. Bogusevic's got great speed at second base. A shift on the infield for Gonzalez to pull, and he takes a strike right there, one and one. That one, at least to Gonzalez, looked like it started in, and then a little two seam action broke back toward the plate. He can just find some outfield grass right here. We'd have a new game. This one all Cameron low. On Renicky spins that wheel looking for somebody to finish a game for him. The 1 1. Little bouncer foul back behind the plate. So the Astros are now down to their final strike. Given the way Lowe threw that ball to first base, a little tap out to the mound might not be a bad play. Somebody <laughs> got the yips. Maldonado, as every good catcher does, goes out there and first thing they do is they place a hand on the pitcher's shoulder, calm him down. Kind of reach up there to get Lowe's yeah, shoulders. Yeah, he's got a goal ways. Lowe stands about six foot eight inches tall. Astros have felt like they are never out of it against the Brewers in this series. Dramatic win Friday, another one last night. Gonzalez trying to keep the streak going. Their third day in these flashback uniforms as a result. One-two to Marwin. We'll see another. Mike Barnett really likes Marwin's two-strike approach. Asked him about that a couple of weeks ago. I said, you know, who, who on your club do you really think takes a, a good approach with two strikes? And he immediately said, Marwin. Said, you know, good patient hitter, willing to choke up on the bat, shorten the stroke. Two for four today with two driven in. Fernando Martinez, the man at third base. It's Brian Bogusevic at second. Lowe's 2 2. <laughs> We've got a full count. Well, why not? Steve Pierce hoping to get one more shot in this thing. And, and this is where, you, you, as a hitter, you're really challenged to maintain that patient approach. You cannot talk yourself into thinking you're going to get a cookie here because the counts run full. He's got a base open. Not that Marlon Gonzalez is Barry Bonds, but. If you're the pitcher, you know, in this situation where a base hit ties the game, you don't want to give in. I don't care who the hitter is, and you've got the luxury of trying to make your pitch because first base is open. The payoff on the way. And a little tapper could be trouble. Ramirez throws, and that'll do it. The Brewers hold on this afternoon. Although, pretty exciting again. The Astros made a run at them, a run in the eighth. At the tying runs in scoring position in the ninth inning. But Cameron Lowe, of all people, managed to get it done. And the Brewers prevail. They salvage a win in this series. Brewers take game three, five to three.